So we're just putting in z and not the z minus 0.4 squared term. Um, and so now uh, we actually still have the coefficient in the wrong direction, even though we've you know, controlled for our confounding factor. And then in, in this model here, you know, someone slipped us the true information, and we specified it correctly, and we get roughly the correct parameter. Um, but, but again, you know, when, when we're dealing with observational data, we, don't, we have no idea which of these models is correct. Um, so, so in terms of trying to figure out what the effect of x on z or on y is, um, you know, we're, we're kind of in trouble when stuff like this happens. Andrew, yeah. the uh, the model that you're using there in z like the LS. Oh like, yes, yes, I'm using z. Right. Um, so yeah, you can do this with just an LM. But so yeah, LS is just is just ordinarily squares, um, doing nothing fancy there. Uh, but I'm using zilig because hey, zilig is part of the type. Um, <laughs> All right, so now let's do some matching. Um, so the, the, ma the matching is actually quite easy. Or I should have shown, uh, so the, the package is called Matchit, capital M-A-T-C-H, capital I-T. Um, so sorry, I had to load that ahead of time, but I didn't show that. Uh, and so actually, so the putting together the match data, it's really just this one line here. Um, so I'm essentially saying X is the treatment I'm interested in, and, and Z is the covariant. Uh, the, the general advice is to include any covariate that you would put in your statistical model in general, and you know put that in the in the left hand side of of your matching formula. Um, and so I'm, I'm just using all of the defaults here. So the, the de default is the nearest neighbor with propensity score matching, and I'm just telling it where my data is. Um, so so this creates a, a match it object, and so it's a match it object. Uh, well, you can pull out a summary, and it'll tell you um, sort of what happened in this matching procedure. Uh, so, so a word that's used a lot in, in describing whether or not a match is good is balance. And so again, we're, we're talking about making the treatment and control groups as similar as possible. Um, and so one way to so balance is essentially a term used to describe that. Um, and so, so in this first part here, we have this is in the unmatched data. Uh, this distance is the the propensity score I was talking about, and you know we've got a somewhat sizable difference there. Uh, more, more noticeably, there's a pretty big difference in the Z between the, the treated and the control group. So the control group is higher on this confounding variable Z. Um, so that's a problem. Um, and then, but look, so we, after matching, um, these two are within you know, 0 0.004 of each other. So essentially, by, by, by running this matching algorithm, we've created balance, you would say, uh, between the treatment and control groups. Um, by 96, 98 percent, um, and then so and then so at the bottom here um, is just telling us that so we had originally we had uh, I, I, there were a thousand observations of the simulation. Originally we had 655 control, 345 treated, and essentially we just dropped 310 of the uh, control group that, that didn't come up with a good match um, when we in the matching algorithm. Um, so, so actually, it's Andrew, yeah. Is that kind of loss pretty typical? Almost. I mean, oh, I mean, um, so it depends which one you use. You can have a match multiple. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So. Two to one or yeah. 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 So I could have put an argument here that said ratio equals two, and then it would have tried to match two control units to every treated unit. Um, so yeah, there, there's there's lots of flexibility in, in how you specify this. Um, for now, I'm just using the default that just looks for one uh, control group for each treated unit. Um, and so, so it's interesting, it's interesting to think that, that all, really all this matching algorithm doing is, one way to think of it is it's just a weighting scheme that's placing zeros or ones on all of your variables, and then you're running your analysis using those weights. Um, so essentially, we're just dropping these observations that are sort of outside of what we want to do in order to create this balance. Um, and if you don't believe that that works, then check out the next slide. Uh, so, so once you have your um, matched object, you want to turn it into a data frame, essentially. Um, so you do that with this match data function. So this is our uh, matched object, just saying um, make a data frame uh, that's matched data out of this matching algorithm we ran. Um, and so now I'm going to run those same three models with the um, so you know not controlling for the confounding variable, incorrectly controlling for it, and correctly controlling for it. And those, there's basically no difference between the, the results we get, and they're all pretty close to the true value of 0.1. Magic. Um, and so yeah, so, so that's, uh, and so, so an interesting thing is, um, also note that I, when I was running the matching algorithm, um, I didn't even correctly specify the functional form here. Remember, so this is actually a function of the transformation of z. 
it actually, it, it actually doesn't even matter. Um, that that uh, all we're doing is creating, you know, creating balance on this covariate, and then magically, it, it just doesn't particularly matter how we run this analysis afterwards. We're going to get roughly the same answer, um, which is really great when you don't know what the true data generating process is. Um, so here is a nice little picture. So uh, this, is, this is just sort of a sample of my simulated data. Um, the C's refer to the control groups, T to the treated group. And so, you know, if you just saw this picture and took the lines away, it'd be pretty difficult to figure out what, whether the treated, whether the treatment effect is positive or negative, because it's a pretty small effect. Um, and so the, the, these lines here, so okay, so the green lines are, each of these pairs of lines is essentially uh, corresponding to one of those three models that was running. The green lines are sort of the uncontrolled model, essentially just a difference in mean test, difference in means tests. The red lines are the one with the with the incorrect uh, control where we were, you know, imposing that it was going to be linear. And then the blue line is the uh, the correctly imposed one. And so the uh, the dark lines correspond to the control. So uh, again, so in, again in the naive model um, with no control, we're predicting that the control group has a higher mean, which is the opposite of what's true. Um, in the incorrectly specified one, we're also making that incorrect inference. But uh, with these blue lines where we've correctly specified it, um, it actually works. Uh, and so, you know, again, it, actually, if we had this picture, we could probably find a way to specify the correct model. But with real data, we generally can't do that. Um, and so here, here's essentially an illustration of what the matching done, has done. So all the, gray, all the gray C's are the observations that we've dropped. And so, so you can sort of see that when the, when the gray C's were there, there are a lot more C's on this side and less C's over here. But once you drop them away, there, there's, in a sense, there, there's balance in terms of there's roughly as many C's as there are T's here, roughly as many C's as there are T's here. Um, and as a result, again, these, these three pairs of lines are the, uh, essentially the, the treatment effects of three different models. And the, the difference between the lines is, is roughly the same in each case um, and happens to be uh, the, the correct effect. So that's a nice way to visualize uh, what the matching has done for us. And so, you know, that, that was just one simulation. So let's run the simulation a thousand times. Um, and you're getting similar results. Uh, if you don't specify correctly, you're, you're getting this wrong negative coefficient. Uh, if you're, sorry, if you don't control for the confounding factor at all, you get this really wrong coefficient. If you control for it incorrectly, you get a uh, sort of wrong coefficient. Uh, if you do it correctly, you get the right coefficient. But um, with matching, you basically get the right answer no matter what. The vertical line uh, corresponds to the, the, the true effect. Um, so this is using the default nearest neighbor matching. I think this is nearest neighbor, nearest neighbor matching with the correct specification in the matching step. And it's, as you can see, you know, it, it works either way. Uh, and then this is using the, the course and exact matching. And again, um, you know, the mean is 0 0.99. We're pretty much, we're pretty much right on that. Um, so that, that's sort of a basic simulation of, of uh, showing how matching is going to get rid of your model dependence. Make sense? Cool. Um, so, so, so to give you a, a little more that you can do with match it, uh, again, you have this formula, which is usual all format, your data, uh, and then your, your, your method, which is, there are about seven or eight methods that have been supported. Um, you, the discard, you can do stuff like some people believe, so, so if you take the convex hull of all the treated, of all the covariates of the treated units, uh, and if, then you can discard any control units that are outside of that, which is essentially a way to get rid of kind of uh, sort of units that never would have been treated. So you can sort of, there, there's, um, actually Gary King also has an article about this, about uh, avoiding making these extreme counterfactual arguments, so the discard can help you with that. Um, so that's what I just talked to. So, so uh, a little more about the methods I already started talking about this nearest neighbor method. Um, so you can specify k to 1. So if you have uh, not many treated units, you may want to say, I want 10 control units per treated unit. Um, and that, that may uh, help you keep more of your data. Um, and you can use various distance measures as well. Um, genetic matching is a relatively new one. Um, which apparently, by some criteria, finds the best balance by using a genetic search, genetic search algorithm. Um, it's super slow, and I don't. Or I, the couple times I've used it, I, I, I haven't really seen evidence that it's really that much better. But obviously, the authors who come up with this find ways to set up their simulations so it works perfectly and nothing else does. So maybe it is magic. Uh, and again, so this course and exact matching is the idea that. Um, 
we're going to sort of uh, make our n-dimensional histogram and only compare people that are in the same bin. Um, 